For someone like me who's interested in the 17th, 18th, 30th, 19th century, um, you sometimes feel a little bit lonely in gatherings of Canadian historians because everybody who studies the 20th century. Um, so some of us find ourselves uh, going to conference for, conferences, for example, on early American history. So the Americans tend to take the colonial period much more seriously. It's partly just there's a lot of them. Um, and so uh, inevitably, I and, and other people interested in early Canadian history find themselves um, in close contact with our American colleagues and uh, increasingly finding them, not only are, do we start to get interested in early Virginia and, and Massachusetts and so on, they're getting uh, interested in early Acadia, New France and so on, uh, and the Western fur trade. And, um, which was, you know, a welcome development. Um, but I began to, to realize they had their own special take on things. So, uh, you know, naturally enough, they view it from their angle. And um, I decided to write an article about what I had perceived as the kind of particularly U.S. approach to early Canadian history. So on the one hand, it's great that they're showing an interest in it. They're making wonderful contributions, uh, and, and no one wants to say to them, hey, you know, get off our, get off our lawn. Um, that's not the point. But you begin to realize that, my goodness, they, they bring to it, of course, uh, a U.S. historiographic sensibility. They come from a very entrenched national historiographical tradition that asks particular questions of the past and that makes meaning in particular ways. And I thought, you know, when I read a book about the deportation of the Acadians uh, in the 1750s that says this was an important event in American history, and you know the first uh, ethnic cleansing in American history. I think, uh, wait a minute, <laughs> American, yes, in the sense that it happens in the North American continent, but you know this is not really part of the U.S. national story, which is the way it's being treated. Um, so. Uh, you know, I, I, I hope in a, in a good-natured and tolerant uh, way, I decided to just kind of look closely at, at the way these things worked. And, the, and the, sort of the distortions that came in when people uh, incorporated phenomena from New France, we'll say from the you know, fur trade of the Hudson's Bay Company, uh, Acadia in the case of... Uh, great and old dream that I just mentioned, um, what happens when they incorporate that into a U.S. national perspective and what, you know, what ends up being distorted and what ends up being missing. And sometimes it's a matter of them kind of reinventing the wheel, like discovering things that I think Canadian historians knew 50 years ago. Uh, but sometimes it's just a, a, an odd way of uh, putting it together. So. Um, uh, I just wanted to take note of that um, and also in, to in, encourage what I would say is a, is a, tr a truly non-national approach to colonial history. So I think it's great. Americans looking at New France, it would be great if M Mexicans and Brazilians did the same uh, and vice versa. And if we, um, you know, can try to overcome the limitations that are imposed uh, by national historiography, um, this, is, this is the desirable end that I was trying to promote. And whether it'll work, I don't know.